Hey everyone, this is Tom with Charlie's Props and we're here to talk about three different controller builds. All of them are Colt controllers. There's two K32s, one K8. Two of them are in YPS large enclosures and one of them is a DIY. So let's get to it and let's talk about them. All right, so what we have here are three control build boxes here and I want to use this one as a comparison because I want you guys all to see what a hand built sort of from scratch build could look like in comparison to these more professional boxes that are available from your pixel store. Now I'm making this video because there's not a whole lot of information about these boxes out here that exist. There's going to be uh, a little bit of criticism in here for some of the, the the box build. There's going to be a little bit of tips in here as well. This is in no way, shape, or form endorsed. Uh, so let's talk about it. So this build has a K32. This is a little bit of an older build that I have for one of my trees. If you watch my video on 12 volt versus 5 volt megapixel, um, sorry, mega tree builds this is the K32 referenced in that build and then this is a K8. Now these two builds here are much more recent. They were done for a client. I wanted something a little more professional uh, than what this right here is and let's get... So this large box is a Plano box that I found at Home Depot after the holidays. I think it was around $20, $25 on sale or clearance, something to that effect. I saw it and I thought, you know what, I need to get this because it's a nice large box and it's going to be really easy to work in. If you notice, it's got two power cords down at the bottom, it's got a Cat5 cable, and on each side we've got 16 outputs for the tree. It's got these large locking handles, and although there's no rubber seal here, this box here has a nice thick heavy ridge this is part of why I chose this although I don't use the locks I do put zip ties in there just to ensure that just in case anything were to happen this stays shut now this has stayed completely dry even through rain snow freezing rain lots and lots and lots of wind but this is what I mean by this is a little bit less of a professional build this is more of a get it done um, we've got all all 32 ports connected here. We're not using any of the expansion at this point, but notice that none of the power supplies are connected to anything. This is also not bolted down. This controller box basically sits under a tree and it stays there. It stays dry, works perfectly fine. Now the reason I'm using this as a comparison is it's got lots and lots of room to work around in, and it was a relatively inexpensive box at about $20. Now this is the large enclosure box available from your Pixel Store. A couple things to note about it is solid metal construction, mostly solid metal I should say. Now in certain climates this is a huge plus. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it where we are where we get a ton of wind and snow and rain but it's you see that it's got vents here on the top that do face down and it's also got some vents here on the side and that's the case on both of these. I think in this kind of weather I might actually just close those off to ensure that nothing is being sucked in through there. I have seen other boxes with downward facing vents where snow actually blows up into them. Now here's one of the here's another criticism that I have of this box specifically is it's got a nice heavy metal construction and it's got these plastic hinges. You may have noticed that I moved this box over here. That's because there's nothing stopping the door from flopping over on those hinges. And in fact, this hinge is fully tightened and is starting to come a little bit loose. Notice here that it's got a nice heavy seal around the edge here, which I really, really like. And this is the enclosure that I have built and set up using the um, using the Culp mounting board. Now, one caveat with this, and we'll get it on the other box, is that the Culp mounting plate does not work with all Culp controllers. So take note of that if you're not building a K32 and their store does not indicate which boards it does or does not fit. Now these are just sitting here so that we don't get them lost because we did opt for five of the 
uh, Ethernet port on here. So this is the way that I decided to mount it. It's a little bit different than what I've seen from other uh, people build. The reason I did this is I feel that it's a lot easier if there's something to go wrong with one of these two power supplies. I can separately handle the power supplies away from the controller. Really easy to handle. Um, one thing to note here as well, which is a huge plus and also a little bit of a minus if you're doing a build like what we did. Notice down here that this has, let me get this out of the way, this has metal bushings here at the bottom. It's kind of hard to see here. And notice we don't have them here. One thing to also note is there are plastic plates that you mount your power supplies to. And it doesn't matter if you order this box with two power cords, one power cord, and doesn't matter if your order has a whole bunch of receivers, you must make sure that you order enough of these plates. It takes two of these plastic plates. Let me kind of zoom in. I don't know if you can see those or not. There's these plastic plates that bolt to the bottom of the power supplies. You need two of those plates for every one power supply, but each box only comes with two plates for one power supply. If you're like me and you want to put at least two power supplies in there, you need to order more of these plates. Now, here's the problem that I have, and it's really hard to show on video, but these here are actually the new larger LR, LRS 600 uh, power supplies. And although they look like they're the same size, and they still have the same mounting dimensions for these plastic plates, they're actually just a little bit thicker. So the, the plastic plate that is included with the box technically doesn't actually fit these the supplies, suppliers, power supplies. You might be saying, well, how did you get them in there? There's actually quite a bit of tension. The bolts technically fit, but when you add in these metal bushings, the bushings are too wide and it's actually spreading these bolts apart. And I actually had to, to use quite a bit of force to get this power supply to actually fit, which is why I'm actually forcing it with the plastic plates above. And then that's also why there aren't any bushings, even though I have a bunch more, there aren't any bushings here because there just isn't physical room to make them fit. So it's something that they may want to redo or reconsider or reference that the LRS 600 is actually not meant to stack the way that this is stacked because they just, they, they really don't fit. Um, it, it did work here with a bit of effort, but take that all with a grain of salt. Now again, I've moved this box over here and I've left it here open on the side so you can see what I meant about the door. And so far these hinges are holding up, but I wouldn't recommend doing this. So I'm gonna open this one up here. I notice that the door just keeps going and it actually has some flex here. When I let go of the box, the entire hinge here, because it's a plastic hinge, it is, although it's all metal construction, it's thin metal, it is actually pulling away from the box itself. So I would not recommend, um, and in fact, you can actually see it's starting to get loose here even, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to spin this a little bit to support the door so we can have this discussion. So you might notice that there's a K8 and there's two differential receivers and the power supplies are not stacked like the other box. That's because the Culp plate, which I ordered two Culp plates, I knew that I was going to build one box with a K8 and one box with a K32, so I ordered two Culp plates with it. Turns out the Culp plate does not fit the K8. The, the reasoning I received doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, um, but it is what it is. So if you're planning to build a K8, do not order the Colt kit. Uh, what I ended up having to do here was take the, the standard plate that comes with, and I drilled the holes uh, because it's acrylic, it's nice and easy to see where you're, where you're uh, working with. I drilled the holes for these, and I also had to drill the holes for the receivers. So I don't know what this plate is meant to bolt to it, uh, in what configuration. I'm only working with the Colts, but I can tell you that Differential receivers, all these holes, and, um, and also one thing to note in these holes is, is if you look closely, a lot of these actually haven't been fully drilled through. I don't know if the CNC that's cutting this wasn't going deep enough in their cut or what, but it is something that I did notice. So for this plate, I just drilled the holes 
for the receivers and for the K8. And the reason the power supplies are upside down is that that was the only configuration that I could get this plate to fit with the bolts and all the power supplies. Now notice again, I've got uh, LRS 612s down there. It's kind of hard to see, but again, there's a lot of tension on these. They do not want to move because of the tension because they, 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 they fit, but they don't actually fit. So this is a solution that you can do on the K8 is to drill your own holes on the plate that's included with the box. So I hope this helps you get some ideas on how to build a K32 or a K8 in one of these. Again, don't get the cold plate if you're planning to put a K8 or even multiple K8s in, in one of these enclosures. The thing that I like, again, about this applies to this and, and the difference in price between the medium box and the large box was relatively insignificant and, you, and even with these plates you still have quite a bit of room to reach around and work. I've got room to put let's say another expansion board or another controller up here so just know that these are really good boxes, really good enclosures. Just watch out for the doors, the door situation. All right, you guys, that completes the discussion of these three cult builds that I've done. One uh, is more of a just get it together, make it work, and it's just going to sit out in the yard. The other two are much more professional builds with a few caveats in them, but I hope you found this information useful. You consider Charlie's props, and have a great day.